How's it going everybody and welcome to another video. And today's video is actually gonna be a light pod comparison uh, between three brands. And um, I'm just thinking about the person who's just starting to get into off-roading or overlanding and who's starting to modify their trucks. One of the first thing that people do is add lighting. And uh, the easiest lights to add are typically uh, ditch lights or pod lights as they're sometimes called. And uh, you know, that's how I started too. And actually specifically, I started with these guys here, which are the rigid D series. I'm gonna put that up there so you guys can see. I'll get them in focus, yep. And uh, these were very, I mean, they were very bright and great lights for a long time for me. The only reason I swapped them out was really because just through few years of use um, and in very uh, different climates. I mean, we're talking about like desert heat versus, you know, snowy temperatures. The, the, the cord that comes off of this, the power cord actually is a little brittle and cracking in some areas. And so because of that, moisture could go in and short them out and then they're kind of useless. Plus, I kind of got tired of how big these are. These are, you know, you can see they're, they're pretty chunky and they weigh a lot. So. I replaced these with the Baja S1 pods, which are on my truck right now. And uh, those have been great, but there's pros and cons to those. And we'll talk about that later in the video. And to make things interesting, we're also going to be comparing these guys, which are the Last Fit Sport Series. And what's cool about these is that they are half the depth of the D Series. And of course you can see they've got quite a bit of surface area and the four light diodes just like the D series. So it's interesting because these three um, light pods more or less are the entry uh, levels of what these companies offer and uh, they're all within the same budget more or less. And we'll talk about dollars and cents later, but should make for an interesting comparison. So with all that being said, we are gonna go through that later tonight. Uh, we're gonna actually see how they illuminate uh, the night and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the stats here in a second. But before we get into any of that, I did also wanna say that Last Fit did actually help sponsor this video by contributing this set of light pods to me. But uh, they get no say in the outcome of this video. Uh, they don't get to influence my opinions in any way, shape, or form. And of course, no money has exchanged hands. So just putting that out there so you guys know that this is going to be my true unbiased opinion. And hopefully by the end of the video, you guys actually like uh, what I have to say. And it helps you guys build your rigs to the level you want to be at. <laughs> anyway, all that being said, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so before we get into how these things perform, I did want to look at the stats just straight from the websites um, from the manufacturers. And here you can see we have the Baja Design S1 pods that I bought. You can see the price here. It's a little bit on the heftier side, but what is nice is that they do include the wiring loom, which not every brand does, so keep that in mind. Uh, it does come in three different uh, light pattern offerings. I went with the wide cornering, which I sort of equate to like f what flood would be. And it does come in two different colors. So you can get it in clear and in amber. I actually bought both. I use the clear for the fronts and then I use the amber for the rears as dust lights, uh, which seems to work out pretty well. Uh, as I scroll down here, I can show you the stats specifically. Uh, the brightness and lumens, I think that's one of the key ones, which is just under 2,400 lumens, which is pretty stout for just a, such a tiny light. But 
it does consume 20 watts uh, of power, which I think is a little bit surprising. I would have expected it to be a little bit more efficient than that, but but that's not too bad. Uh, more good news is 50,000 hours almost of the average rated life per hour, which is, I think, pretty stout. And my favorite stat on these is really the size. I mean, look, it's 2.1 cubed, right? So really, really tiny. And then at the same time, less than half a pound. How can you argue with that? Moving on. Here are the last fit sport series. And again, we went with the floods. And these do come in both amber and in, well, I guess they're calling it yellow, uh, and in white. And when we look at the... The actual uh, stats here. Let's scroll down to those. Do, 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 do. Right here. Here we go. So, flood white. Really cool to see. These are actually more efficient at 18 watts than the Baja designs. And these have four light diodes versus the one. So, that's kind of interesting. And then there is 2,000 rated uh, lumens on the output side at a, just about a little over 5,600 Kelvin, which is kind of a nice color light. I, I actually prefer something closer to 6,000, but I think these are actually better than the S1s in terms of the Kelvin scale, which is cool to see. And here, they also give you just a, a really good breakdown of how well these things are built. I mean, you can see the face plates are, I mean, they feel like they're like bulletproof glass almost. The casing itself is really like aluminum, uh, like almost like aeronautics aluminum grade. I mean, it feels like a tank. Uh, and the heat sink is a super important element to this because they're serious about dissipating heat so that way it sustains the life of the light pod, which I think is pretty cool. And you can see just how small this is in terms of its depth, which I think is pretty cool. It's a really nice modern touch. All right, and then moving on, the last one is the traditional old school guy, the Rigid D-Series. I mean, these things have been around for a very, very long time, and there's just a million different variations of these, but this is what I ended up, what I ended up buying. They aren't cheap. These are on the high end as well, but they do deliver in a couple of places. So you can see here, number one, the lumens are almost 3,200. So clearly, these are going to be the brightest, which you know I, I think is... It's great to see. I mean, that's why you buy something. But it's going to be interesting because I haven't ran these in a long time. So tonight when we when we actually check it out, I'm curious to see about the light throw. Because when you look at this, it kind of suggests that it's a very almost spotlight kind of throw, even though it's a flood. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but we'll see. Um, no surprise here. It's the least efficient at 30 watts of the three. Uh, and another not so great metric is the weight. I mean, almost four pounds uh, for just two pod lights. It's kind of heavy. Uh, that's just another reason why I opted to move away from these. But there you go. So all that being said, guys, we are going to go out into the field tonight, check out the luminosity, and hopefully we can get some uh, clear conclusions drawn and help you guys figure out which is the best pod for you. All right, so as you can see, I have uh, waited till the evening. It's about 9.30 p.m. and uh, it is a good opportunity now to actually test the performance of these three different ditch lights to see which one actually performs the best and compare and contrast. Now, yes, this is a parking lot and on this side it is well lit, but behind the camera, there's a wall here which we're gonna be using where I'm gonna be shining the light pods one at a time so that way we can get a sense of their performance. Now, just to reiterate, we have three different brands. So the first one is the Baja Design S1, which is a single diode pod. We have the Last Fit Four Pod Sport Series, and I also brought the Rigid D-Series Four Pod. So uh, let's go ahead and check out which ones perform the best. All right, so let's turn on and start with the Baja Design S1 pod first. Three, two, one. All right, so uh, that looks pretty good. Um, actually on video, I actually think it looks uh, better than it actually does in real life, but the light itself is, it's not that bright, and actually these S1s, I believe, are only putting out 2,000 lumens, uh, but still pretty good considering the size, and it's only one diode. 
But one thing I'm noticing is, though it's bright directly in the center of where this particular light, and by the way, these are the, the wide is what they're called. So they're supposed to be like the equivalent floodlights. Um, the, the wider you go across the light uh, spectrum of where it's actually like, um, the photons are like shaving out, um, it actually starts to look a little bit like the light's falling off. So definitely it's bright in the middle. And as you move away from the middle, it, you know, the light gets a little bit dimmer. So, um, I mean, good considering their size and weight, uh, but um, probably not the best performer overall. Okay, so now we're gonna try the last fit. And again, these are the sport series. They're not actually their top of the line. Their top of the line is called the HP series, which has 4,000 lumens, but the sport series, I believe they're also 2,000 lumens. So let's check out the difference here. And this should be a flood. So that's the style ditch light. Three, two, one. All right, so I mean, you can kind of tell the brightness uh, of the, the the ditch light itself is very similar to the S1. However, you'll also notice that it seems to be more sustained as the as the light moves towards the edges. So, in other words, where I think the S1 seemed to be a little bit dimmer towards the the sides, this one seems to be a lot more sustained for a brighter, wider range, which. Kind of tells me it's, it, it outperforms the S1. Not a huge surprise, but kind of interesting to see it. All right, so last on our list is the Rigid D-Series. Let's check it out. All right, so um, a pretty just immediate difference. Uh, I hope you can tell on camera. So it is very bright. Uh, actually, I looked it up, and this particular... Uh, D-series pod is 3,200 lumens. So it's still, it's 1,200 lumens more than the Baja S1 and also the Last Fit Sport Series. Um, so yeah, I'm not surprised it's brighter, but actually what's interesting here is that this is supposed to be a floodlight, um, but it, it's actually very sharp on the edges, meaning like it's bright where you aim it, but it falls off. Um, it's very like apparent, like if it's not, <laughs> Like, I don't know if you could tell, but just like, if you could just see on the edges, it just cuts right there and just cuts on this side. So like, there's not a whole lot of luminosity to the sides. So it's not a very wide, um, you know, throw of light. So I guess I'm a little bit surprised from that perspective, but still very bright and a worthy contender. All right, so that is our test, guys. And uh, just to conclude some stuff, um, I think pretty clearly the rigid D-Series wins this particular battle. The light was clearly the brightest at 3,200 lumens. However, the drawback with that is that the light throw is very square. So, you know, it acts more like a spotlight, even though these were floods when I bought them. So I was kind of surprised to see how like sharp the light is at the edges, um, which not ideal for dish lights, um, although they are very bright. The other problem with the rigids, again, they're just so heavy and bulky and the design is not really modern anymore. I mean, they were great five years ago, seven years ago, but now they're kind of old. <laughs> so, all right, let's put rigid aside for a second. Uh, and actually one final note on that is, I remember paying about $200 for those. So, you know, if you're budgeting for stuff, this is where you might want to think about how the price can actually affect uh, the one you think actually won this. So $200 for the D-Series. Now let's talk about the S1s because this little S1 here, as you can see here, it's so tiny and, it's, and inconspicuous. You might not even notice it. Uh, and I love that about this particular light pod because I've got so many lights on this, I don't really need a ditch light to do the majority of my lighting. I just needed a little something extra or you know, just have something for those moments when you're on a trail and it's nighttime and you can't quite see where the edge is. I mean, that's what they're there, that's what they're there for. So for me, I, that's why I bought them. But I gotta tell you, seeing them in this comparison, they actually performed the weakest. So the light was wide, which is good. The throw was wide, but you know, they faded really, really quick. And, um, you know, I, I think, I don't think I've noticed it before, but now that I've seen that, it's gonna be hard for me to unsee this when I use them, but um, not the best performing, but 2000 lumens out of a one diode, 
kind of a nice trade-off. So uh, that's great, but here's the problem with the S1s. They actually cost $225. So they actually are more expensive and the most expensive here uh, between these three. Which takes us to the last fits. Now, the thing about the last fit is that the last fit is actually, I mean, in my opinion, it, it, you know, sort of the underdog because it's the name that most people don't know. But here's what's sort of interesting. They've been doing this for a long time and their engineering is, it, it's starting to show in just this test to me because their actual body of the light itself is actually half the width of the D series. And the majority of that is the heat sink. The reason why the heat sink is there is to dissipate that heat as quickly as possible, which actually extends the life of the electronics and light diodes inside, which means they're gonna be reliable for longer and you're gonna get more use out of them. So that's pretty cool. And like I said earlier, these things are built pretty well. I mean, they, they're, it's, it's like a little tank in your hand. I mean, the aluminum that they used, even the wires, I mean, they feel really high quality and I'm pretty impressed with uh, just the overall design. Now, light-wise, um, they were similar to the S1s. Actually, the throw, I think, was about the same. It was like the equal width or whatever, but I noticed that the light seemed brighter for more of that spectrum over the S1. So I think that they outperformed the Baja S1s, but they didn't quite measure up to the rigids. Now, all that being said, here's the kicker. The last fits only cost $130. So price-wise, I mean, you're saving <laughs> like so much money over the other two that it makes it worth it and actually something that you want to consider if you're in the market. The other thing too is about the last fits is if you want more light and you really want something that's going to be your, you know, your, your go-to lighting source, well, guess what? You can actually get the HP series, their exact same body, but a lot more power. You actually get 4,000 lumens and I think those cost uh, marginally more. I think they're about 200 bucks. But all that being said, I'm gonna give you guys some more encouragement, which is if you guys go to LastFit's website, and I'll put the website on the screen somewhere over here, um, and you use checkout code PSD15, you will get 15% off your first order. So there you go. Uh, even more money off the price, a pretty decent light, something that's well built and uh, won't break the bank. It's kind of a nice win. So anyway, all that being said, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video to this point. If you have, please go ahead and like and subscribe. You know what to do. Other than that, guys, I've enjoyed this. I hope you have too. Catch you on the next one.